Hey everybody, Corey Ballard here, back again with another video. It's going to be another recap video. I'm going to go over the episode of Rock Legends about Marvin Gaye. I'm going to do all the stuff at the end where I tell you what to do. Um, my phone is limited on space while I'm going to try to go ahead and, after I do this video, look into what I can get rid of and free up some space. <clears throat> Hopefully I can finish this video in one video the other video i just did i had to do two so i'm gonna just jump right into it and then we'll see okay so this is about marvin gay marvin gay he was actually born in washington dc washington dc i didn't know that and um yeah so his father was a preacher he was very abusive and strict um in high school he marvin gay he was in the glee club and he sung in various different doo-wop groups, so he was very interested in music and such. He dropped out of high school. He joined the Air Force. He didn't like it so much. They said he actually um, um, uh, pretended to be like mentally challenged or something. Like he was um, like he had an issue with, <laughs> with like he was deranged or something to get out of being there. And so that was funny. Um, <laughs> uh, then he ended up joining a group, another doo type group. They were called the Marquis. Bo Diddley discovered them. And they started singing background for Bo Diddley on his recordings and stuff like that. Um, Diddley, Bo Diddley, he got them a record label. He got them a record deal, the, the Marquis. They released a single. It didn't end up doing so well. And they ended up being dropped. My arm hurts so much. What's up with that? Let me change arms. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Okay. So, um. Well, I don't like this angle. Hold up. I'm going to change it back. Dang it. Well, got to sacrifice and suffer for my art. Okay. So, they were dropped from the label after their single didn't do so well. This guy, he was in the Moon Glows. His name was Harvey Fu Fuqua. Uh, I don't know. The person was British. I don't know if they were saying his name the way I would say it in English. But she said Fuqua. Um, so, Fuqua, Harvey Fuqua, he took the Marquis and then he made them the new Moon Glows. So, they were Harvey Fuqua and the Moon Glows. And... They sang and whatnot, but then they ended up disbanding. And then Harvey and Harvey Fuqua and Marvin Gaye, they moved to Detroit, and Marvin they signed a record deal. Mark and Marvin he started becoming a studio session singer, singing different stuff, I guess, demos and stuff or background singing for different artists. Okay, so one year. Um, Harvey and Marvin, they went to Barry Gordy, who is the founder of Motown, of course. They went to his house for Christmas and performed. Gordy, he was very, you know, um, amazed by Marvin Gaye. And so he bought out his contract from Harvey Fuqua on the spot there after he heard him at the Christmas party. And um, so then he became a Motown artist. And Marvin Gaye, he was very different than all the other Motown artists, they said. So, uh, you know, Mo if you don't know, Motown was very famous for having, like, this charm school type of, like, they had a pop university, like a pop artist university. So they would take you through this boot camp so where you become a, a polished artist. So Marvin Gaye, he didn't do all that stuff. He, he didn't go to the through the boot camp and he wouldn't work this like the they would be on the schedule and stuff like that he didn't do any of that stuff so um, during his time at Motown he was very um, controversial and tried to um, like like go against the, the rules kind of he was kind of a rebel um, so it started with that he ended up marrying Barry Gordy's sister um, actually, he was married to her for several years, and, yeah, so he started his career, he didn't do so well at first, but then he started taking off, he was doing duets with, he did duets with a lot of people, um, 
a lot of women. He did a duet album with Mary Wells. Then he did a song with Kim Weston. Then he did an album, several albums with Tammy Terrell. And he actually did an album with Diana Ross. So he was a duets type of person. That was his specialty at Motown um, during that time. Uh, I didn't know he did anything with all these other people. I knew about Tammy Terrell. But I didn't know he did an album with Diana Ross and Mary Wells as well. Okay, so... They were talking about, in this episode of Rock Legends, several songs that I didn't know were different other people's songs before Marvin Gaye's. So, so it said, How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You was originally by Marvin Gaye, which I didn't know, which is a song that I know from Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, I believe. So, I didn't know Marvin Gaye had sang that song. Originally, and then so, several songs that Marvin Gaye that I knew to be Marvin Gaye's were sung originally by the Miracles. So I'll be doggone, and ain't that peculiar? Was actually sung by the Miracles. They said before Marvin Gaye. So I didn't know that at all. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Marvin was blowing up, and like I said earlier, he butt heads with Barry Gordy, and he went against the rules at Motown a lot of the times. Um, Barry Gordy, he was against releasing several songs that were very um, popular and um, very important for Marvin Gaye's career. So, I heard it through the grapevine. He didn't want to, re want to release Marvin Gaye's version. So, um, Gladys Knight's version actually ended up coming out before his which I didn't know that. I thought that uh, Marvin Gaye originally sang that song. But um, he recorded before her, but it wasn't released because Mar Barry Gordy didn't like that version and didn't think it would do well, I guess. So, um, by popular demand, it became a single because they were playing it so much and it, uh, it was getting a lot of airplay. So, it actually became, um, you know, that's one of his most well-known songs and what he's like, like one of his signature songs. Like he's known for that. That's why. That's one of the main songs I know him from. Um, so, and then also, what's going on when he recorded that album? Um, um, Barry Gordy. He didn't want him to release that song too. And Marvin Gaye actually protested. He he refused to record until he was able to release what's going on. So, um, uh, Marvin Gaye was struggling for creative control and freedom um, throughout his entire uh, Motown career, pretty much. Uh, uh, what else? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this video now because <laughs> now it's getting close to nine minutes. Um, yeah, and I have a whole page of notes still. So, I'm going to come right back. I'm going to do my outro for you guys, but I'm going to come right back and do the second part of this video. So, go ahead and watch the second part. The first... Go ahead and watch the second part. Okay? This is the first part. I get a... Uh, okay. Bye. Do, 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 do.